When people think of the United Arab Emirates, they only see Dubai, skyscrapers, and fast cars. In truth, however, there's so much more than that. The story of the UAE is one of strategy, exceptional leadership, and careful planning. In this video, we'll go over how the UAE got to where it is today, what it's like to live there, and what big decisions they made to turn that patch of sand into this worldwide power. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Number 1. How They Got There In the early days, the region was controlled by tribes called sheikdoms, with the main activity being pearl trading. These guys were super big on pearls. And being all day out on the sea, you notice things, mainly British ships making their way to India. So they did what any respectable pirate would do and started to interfere with the British Navy and their precious Indian tea. With the region now having a strategic importance, the British found themselves having to make a deal with the sheikdoms. This was one of the first steps toward the stability of the region. They had good trade with pearls and protection from the British Army. And then oil was discovered and two things happened. One, the Brits realized they could no longer afford to keep their army in the desert. And two, the sheikdoms decided to unite in order to secure this valuable new resource. And so, the United Arab Emirates was formed. Number 2. Great Leadership and Smart Decisions once oil was found, the region became like Sim City with cheat codes. This was where great leadership came into play. They didn't want to be just an oil exporting country. In order to really transform the region, a bigger vision had to be put in place. A vision where the UAE is a financial and cultural hub. So they took the profits from oil and dumped them all into infrastructure. They invested heavily in pretty much every sector there is to be invested in. In just a couple of years, they raised skyscrapers scrapers, built roads, hospitals, schools, entertaining hubs, commercial hubs, and more islands. Because, you know, you could never have too many islands. Number 3. Living Conditions So what's it like to live in such a place? There's no shortage of things to do, that's for sure, and they really wanted people to be happy. They actually have a Minister of State Happiness, whose job it is to make sure everyone is happy. Emirati nationals enjoy subsidized education, healthcare, and fuel, along with a lot of packages for investing in real estate, and no income tax, which means everything you make, you get to keep. This gives people a lot of wiggle room with their money. Plus, salaries in the government sector and a lot of other industries are pretty high to begin with. It's also one of the safest places to live in. But this only applies to natives, and it's pretty much impossible for a foreigner to be given nationality. Or at least, it used to be, until a couple of months ago. Which brings us to number 4. You can now obtain citizenship as a foreigner. Earlier this year, the UAE made headlines when they announced they are now officially giving citizenship to foreigners. This was unheard of before. So, what gives? Why did they suddenly change their minds? Gulf governments were always opposed to giving permanent residency to foreigners. Here's why. Oil prices crashed, the pandemic happened, and foreigners were forced to leave the Emirates. Low oil prices and no foreigners is a big problem for the Gulf countries. So, in an attempt to bring foreigners back and boost the economy, they did the unprecedented. However, not just anyone can apply. There isn't even an application process. Instead, you have to be selected by royals or government officials if you meet certain criteria. So, if you're an investor, specialized talent, doctor, engineer, or artist, there might be a way for you to become an official citizen of the UAE. Number 5. Plans for Life After Oil Oil resources will not last forever, and prices have been fluctuating like crazy for years. So in the future, an oil-based economy is pretty much nonsense for the Emirates. In other words, oil made them rich, and oil can make them poor, too. So what's their plan? Already in Dubai, which by the way is one of the seven emirates, not a country nor the capital, the oil contribution is less than 1% of the total GDP. So how do they make money? Instagram. Just kidding. Well, kind of. You've probably heard of Burj Al Arab, the pinnacle of luxury hotels. But despite being one of the tallest hotels in the world, it only has around 200 rooms. You see, the point of this hotel isn't to make a profit, it's to attract people with deep pockets. 
people who come to the Emirates to spend mad cash, because tourism and the financial sector is what's pushing the Gulf economy forward. Right now, Dubai is the only emirate with a diversified economy, while the other six are heavily reliant on oil revenues. Number 6. Strong Marketing Speaking of Dubai, they figured out pretty early on how to attract more people. There are some things you can only do in the Emirates. Let's take skydiving for example. I mean, sure, you can skydive pretty much anywhere, but nothing comes close to flying over Dubai. Want to ride a buggy in the sand dunes? No problem. But how about while doing that on your way to a ski resort? Also no problem, as Dubai has one of the biggest ski resorts inside of the biggest malls on the planet. Let's take food, since it's one of the best ways to bring people together. You bet you'll find every single cuisine on the planet here. As you can see, they found every fun activity and went balls to the wall on it. Everything you want to do, you can do in the Emirates. Well, not everything, since they actually have some pretty interesting laws. We'll get into those after number 7. A New City When was the last time a new city was built? Have you ever thought about it like that? Well, there's one currently being built just outside of Abu Dhabi. It's called Mostar City, and as stated on their website, it's a pioneer in sustainability and a hub for research and development, spearheading innovators to realize greener, more sustainable urban living. The construction started in 2008, but has faced several setbacks, including the financial crisis. Right now, it's expected to be fully functional by 2030. It's powered by solar panels and, most interestingly, there are no light switches or water taps in the whole city. Instead, they have a bunch of motion sensors to control water and electricity consumption. Number 8. Weird Laws You like to swear a lot? Jail. You have a dirty car? Jail. Oh, you're washing your car? Also jail. Well, maybe not jail, just a hefty fine, you know, we didn't want to ruin the joke. They do, however, have a bunch of laws which may sound weird to you depending on where you come from. One example is spreading rumors on social media which is seen as damaging to the social peace and public order. An Australian teacher was actually jailed, fined, and deported for sharing a photo of a parked car across disabled parking spaces. Number 9. Not Everyone Is Rich When you think of the Emirates, you might be thinking riches and glamour. Yes, there are a lot of rich people in the capital of Abu Dhabi and Dubai, but not every Emirati is a millionaire. As a matter of fact, the top 1% hold over 50% of the entire country's wealth. Also, the vast majority of the workforce is composed of migrant workers, and while the Emirates are famous for a lot of things, labor conditions for migrant workers is not one of them. Number 10. The Richest Person in the UAE when you think about the wealthiest people in the Emirates, you automatically think of the royal family, right? Who else could bolster such a title if not the royals who rule the Emirates? Well, turns out at the moment of writing this piece, the richest person in the UAE is actually a Russian. His name is Pavel Durov. He's the founder of Telegram and Forbes just estimated his net worth to be $17.2 billion. He's also based in Dubai, which technically makes him the richest guy in the Gulf. Granted, not everything is publicly known about the wealth of the royal families that rule the Seven Emirates. Which brings us to today's question. Do you think the Emirates could survive the future on just oil? Let's get a conversation going in the comments, we'll be sure to jump in ourselves. And as a thank you for watching with us until the end, here's your bonus. You can visit the whole world without leaving Dubai. They created an archipelago of small artificial islands constructed in the shape of a world map located on the waters of the Persian Gulf. The project is not yet finished, but when it's done, you should be able to get a taste of every country in the world and still make it in time for brunch.